So two weekends ago, I was able to go down to Dallas-Fort Worth area, kind of just get away for the weekend. So my boyfriend and I went down and, and saw my sister and her fiance and just spent the entire weekend with them. It was really cool to just be away from school and be away from, from lesson planning, being away from grading and take that time and, and just hang out. We went kayaking, we went downtown Dallas one night and just had a good time together. So it was really, really fun to just kind of catch up on, on some me time and spend some time with my boyfriend, spend some time with my sister. You graduate college and you're like, I got this, I can do this. Student teaching was a breeze. How hard can this really be? But when you're the one that's making the thousand decisions a day, it can get really overwhelming and really overwhelming very quickly. And having an outlet is so important, whether it's binge watching Netflix or going to the gym. Just having that one hour to myself where it's just me, my music, the weights, running, whatever I choose to do, it has been such a relief for me because that's my hour of the day. That's the day that I can focus on me. Do something that you're paying for or that you've signed up for that you're committed to. I think that for just your mental sanity and your break, you need that. Whether it's going to dinner, whether it's doing something socially, do something for yourself that you enjoy. Little things like that for yourself will really help your sanity. Always keep snacks in the classroom. Today I was walking around feeling like I was going to throw up because I was so hungry. So already started eating my trash. I've got my coffee open. I've got my water open. And I always have a drawer full of snacks for the students and for myself. I introduced what I like to call as Santa mail. Sent from the North Pole. And I had it um, in the freezer, so when I got it out, I was like, oh, this, this envelope is all cold, and why is it so cold? Oh, it says it's from the North Pole. Do you guys know what that is? In addition to the day that the Santa mail came, I wrapped up this little dude. We talked about what his name was and why he was here and that the elf was gonna probably watch us from Thanksgiving to Christmas to make sure that we're on the nice list and we had a big talk about the nice list and that I could call Santa whenever I needed but this little guy will go home at the end of every week and fly home and tell Santa what was happening. It says, Dear Miss Brady and friends, my elf's name is Zippy. He sees everything so remember to always stay on the nice list. Love, Santa. Then I talked about how Santa put a Santa cam in, which is actually the smoke detector. And they loved it. So, finished off my first semester, really awesome. It was long, it was hard, it was grueling, but you know, I survived. Hey, what else can I ask for? I let them draw on my board, I let them play board games. It was just really nice to kind of let them just be kids for a little bit. The day of our Christmas party, all the kids signed up for a different thing to bring. And this little boy, he comes in in the morning and he's all discombobulated like, ew, 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 I have something in my backpack for you, Miss Brady. What is going on? So he hands me two store-bought packages, of chocolate chip cookies. So I just kind of open it. He's taken a bite out of every cookie in both boxes. I brought him over and I'm like, come here, come here. So I was just looking at these cookies that you brought. And did you by chance look at them before you brought them? No. There's a bite taken out of every cookie. Do you have an elf at your house? No. Did you take a bite out of each cookie? That just like made me laugh.
first day of break and we already have a white Christmas so I'm not complaining that's for sure I've been drinking coffee all day I even got my teachers rule coffee mug what are you doing making some more cookies cookie monster oh yes Graham that's a gift from the kindergartners or it can also be a car freshener I did a lot of laying around. I slept until like 10 o'clock every day, which I didn't think was gonna happen, but it's just kind of weird how like my anxiety level was so chill for break and I really truly forgot about life at school. And then coming back just like hit me like a train. Week one after Christmas break is in the books. We just started right in with adjectives and I taught some writing, but one of my things over break that I just kept dwelling on was how can I help these kids be more responsible? Some of them can't turn anything in and they struggle to just know what they're supposed to do for the next day. And so for this quarter, I really want to try and focusing on taking ownership, being a leader, those life skills that they're gonna need way past sixth grade. What is that? A son. It's been a pretty good start. The kids still raise their hands. I am enjoying teaching like math, loving it the past few days because it's hard. This is ding, 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 we have a winner. So now it's kind of like higher level thinking and I'm enjoying it a little bit more. So how does the freedom of choice or lack of freedom of choice affect the quality of It's back to school time. We are officially back in session. I'm still struggling a little bit with falling back into that routine, but it's been going pretty well so far, no complaints. In fact, everything kind of seems almost a little too good. My students have come in well prepared and they've kind of got right back into the swing of things. Haven't really seen any behavior issues yet. I mean, it is still early on. I would hope we're not gonna see anything too crazy during these first few days. Hi, my name is Skylar Ross. I am from Linwood, Kansas, and I am a first year teacher. So my teaching experience is a little bit different from the normal uh, teaching experience. I started in early January. I got hired from the Shawnee Mission School District to take the place of a teacher that was just switching positions within the building. And so instead of starting in August and having them all year, I started midway with them having one teacher for three or four months and then having me for the rest. And that was definitely another challenge coming in in the middle of the year. The teacher before him had already kind of taught these students a specific way, so he was bound determined. He goes, I'm, I'm gonna somehow make this work. So growing up in Linwood was like living in the typical American small town. Everything else always seemed more interesting to do if it wasn't in town. It's changed over the years. It used to have livery stables, banks, hotels. And it was quite an active town many years ago for the railroad. Skyler is the youngest of four. He was the toughest, the most independent, always on his own. He was very athletic. And then in, in high school, he, he enjoyed football. He took to sports like duck to water all the way up from elementary school playing soccer, I'm in the middle school starting to play football, and then on to high school doing every sport I could. When I was 18 years old, I was playing a football game against Perry LeCompton, and it was towards the end of our season, and circumstances happened, and I ended up getting a concussion. First got hit the second quarter, and didn't really think anything of it. Went out for the second half of the game, and I got hit again really, really hard, even harder than the first time. Two weeks of that school year, he doesn't even remember. And he was driving to school scary enough those days. I got my concussion about October and it continued on through November and December. I had a teacher, he started talking to me and he's like, hey, is everything okay? I was like, oh yeah, I'm fine. And then he kind of saw through that and he said, what's going on? I told him that I really can't remember anything. Short-term memory is just, it was not there. He sat with me for 45 minutes 
every day after class and said, all right, what do you need help with? After I started working with him in math, then everything else started happening a little bit better. My memory came back. He's one of the main reasons why I, I want to become a teacher. It doesn't surprise me he became a teacher. But just to have always had the ability to see when someone needs something, he's pretty willing to think of them first. I think something we forget a lot of times as adults and just kind of overlook is that these children are people. They have thoughts of their own. That's the whole point of them going to school. They see things and they can figure things out. You know, diversity, it's all over our country and it's great to welcome that into the classroom. And so I look forward to being able to really individualize everything for my students. I can't just do the same old lesson every single day. You have to make it your own. You have to take the, the curriculum and your resources and really cater it to your students. And uh, it's a challenge. You do it the way you know, and you may get, out of 26, you may get 18 of them on board and they understand it. But then you still have eight that are like, well, I don't, I don't know. And so that's when you have to start digging into your memory bank and thinking, all right, how is another way I can explain this? Really being able to say, all right, well, I, I did get it this way, and most of my class does, but I still need to make sure that these other ones have a chance to do it as well. You know, I gained a student in she was taught a completely different way than how we were teaching it on the test. And so it was just kind of like that frustration of, hey, you've got to learn this way. Differentiation is so important. You have to think intentionally about every single one that you do and you have to write it down and document it. And I'm modifying things all the time. After a little bit of practice, those challenges and struggle kind of becomes a little more second nature for you. What did you name him? Lucky. What? Lucky. Lucky the dog? Lucky the... Shamrock Man. Shamrock Man. Lucky the Shamrock Man. You ready to go hang him in the hallway for St. Patrick's Day? Yes. Yep. What did you name yours? Chasey Paxley. Chasey. Chase from Paw Patrol? Paxley. Chasey Patrick. Are you ready to put your little guy together? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see. Today I experienced something kind of hard, I guess one of those things that just working here on a military installation that provides challenges that you can't really always predict. One of my little guys who's been probably the most bold character personality here in the class, he's been my reason I have headaches, the reason the principals have headaches. He's just come so far, still behavior problems, but I learned to just love the heck out of him. and. We got word that his family is moving. They were clearing from Fort Riley, meaning they would no longer be active in the military and getting out as soon as possible. His birthday is tomorrow, actually, and his mom said, I'd like to have a party for him on Wednesday. He didn't come Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday. And I have so much of his snack and pens and pencils and paper and folders. And not that that's closure, but I get to say bye to them and I get to say, I'm so proud of you and I'm gonna miss you and our class isn't gonna be the same. And, and I kind of thought maybe he'd show up today and then when I went to do my attendance, he wasn't even on my roster. He's not here anymore. And that just sucks. Like, they don't tell you that sometimes your kids just won't show back up. And that's hard. Can you hear me? Hello? I guess. I've kind of just come to the point that, you know, no matter what happens in my day, you know, they're my group of kids and I, you know, enjoy them and care for them and um, I had a kid move away and so he had a postcard that he wanted to take with him and it was like a picture of Dobby and so I wrote our address on it and he actually like wrote back to us and talked about his new school and gave us his address and so we're going to start pin palling with him and so really just making sure he's so involved in our, you know, Irish family and Sorry, it just knife in the chest, but um, that was kind of a hard thing too, like losing your first kid. So, and then I had another student, her dad just deployed, and so she was a wreck for about a week, coming to school crying every day, and mom pulled her out for three days, and 
you know, I totally get that and like just being really supportive of, you know, everybody in their time of needs. When everybody has a time of need, it kind of just puts like this unexpected strain on, especially when it all happens at once. It is rapid fire, Taylor. We also got a new student this week, which was terrifying. And we had introduced her to everybody. Everybody introduced to her. She was very, very quiet. I didn't know what to do for a new student. I was really worried that I didn't do what I needed to the first day. But as we were dismissing, she went to the office to go home. And as I was walking to the office, she sprinted down the hallway and gave me a huge hug and said how excited she was to be in my class and just how, how excited she was about the entire school year. It kind of melted my heart a little bit. <laughs> I'm really excited. <laughs> I think it's gonna be fun. I'll give you the light of the moon and a ship to sail across the ocean Come join me soon, I'll be waiting And waiting But don't make me wait too long I'll give you the colors of the rainbow And every color in between I'll give you it all My number, my key A house by the churning sea it is second semester here And we are actually in our second six weeks already Things are just flying by and it's just been a really actually awesome ride this second semester. It's been crazy like the night and day difference I feel between last semester and this semester and part of it might be that the end is in sight so I feel more relaxed. It could be that I've got a few better things going for me, not so many family members sick, those type things. But honestly, it is so much of just getting used to the trade and used to the battles and used to like that, the flow of teaching. I now can say surviving my first semester here that you are going to be tired, you're going to be exhausted, you're going to feel like every day's a battle and struggling with all these different things. And I can honestly say that already this second semester, I have found a renewed passion and so much joy within my students. It has truly been a great semester, even with its struggles. We got an email from a parent this morning wanting to talk. That's a terrifying thing. I was hoping it was going to be like a 15, 20 minute meeting and she just left about 10 minutes ago. <laughs> so a, uh, a 15, 20 minute conversation turned into a two and a half hour conversation about what her daughter thought of me um, and just overall how, how I could help the situation that was happening. And we got it handled. But this parent said, you know, I've talked to other parents and they were really happy with the way you're doing stuff. And I've had Quite a few parents shoot me emails and say, hey, Mr. Ross, you're, you're doing an awesome job. And as teachers, you, you just kind of soak it up and eat it up. And sometimes it runs off your back and you don't you don't worry about it. You don't uh, you don't say anything about it. It doesn't ever affect you. And then sometimes you're like, man, I needed that. I'm so glad. So glad you uh, you said that. The parents play such a major role in how kids are treated and handled and what they come to school like and how they perceive learning. I've got parents that are, you know, whatever you need, I will be there for you and I'm gonna, you know, help you out in the classroom and donate when I can. To you're a first year teacher, you don't know what you're doing, to here's all of the drama in my life. I've also had conversations with parents that went very, very, very bad to the point where they were crying on the phone while talking to me because I didn't understand how unique and special their child was. And I found it very hard for myself to stay calm. Like I was like, okay, Caleb, you gotta make sure you're not overreacting, make sure you're not instigating or pushing things further. Luckily, I worked in retail for a long time. So I'm very used to that angry customer type. You just have to be prepared to deal with those parents that aren't happy with their item. They are not happy with what's going on and they are not afraid to let their voices be heard. Each week I'm just looking for a student to kind of like stand out and go the extra mile or maybe it's something as simple as your son held the door for me when he very easily could have just kept walking on. 
making that known to parents, I find has been really important. Um, it's also been really interesting to see how parents are responding to to getting a phone call from their, their student's homeroom teacher. One mom in particular just sounded so panicked on the phone when I was speaking with her about her son or daughter. And I just said, you know, oftentimes you don't hear the positive things from a teacher. Once those parents feel like they have a connection with the teacher, that the teacher knows their son or daughter, that makes a huge difference just in, in the interactions that I've had with the parents. Morning. So it's the last day of school. I realize it's the last time I'll probably ever go through that gate because I don't think I'll ever find myself back on Fort Riley. Just kind of sad, and I kind of got annoyed earlier because I don't do, I don't really do emotions very often, and I already have these dumb goosebumps, and I know that I'm gonna have them all day long because it's gonna be a day full of feels, and so I'm just gonna keep my sunglasses on all day. <laughs> We have made it. It is over. The year is up. I cannot believe I survived. I am exhausted. I feel a million years older, but my heart is also very full. It's been a really hard day saying goodbye. I handed out the letters to students. I also pulled them to the side and told them each individually, kind of just why I appreciated having them in class and how I'm gonna miss them. Like here, I've got pages after pages that people have colored me. You can see some writing up here. A bunch of them wrote things on the back, so that way they could just give little notes to me. I told them I'm hanging all of these on my fridge and I want to be able to remember them. Somebody even took the time to paint me a picture. This is awesome. They took so much time to make this and they made it for me. It was just a really good reminder that my students appreciated me. And it just goes to show that teaching is a very intrinsic job. You have to remember that you are changing these children's lives. I've had so many students say that I was the only positive thing in their day. And I even had one student flat out say, Mr. Roth, whatever you do, I hope you teach middle school because your positivity, kids need that. Those kids mean so much more to me than they will ever know. And I will miss them so, so, so much. You go through all of the up and downs that are being a first year teacher. You'll figure it out then. If you go in with that attitude that you're better than everyone else, you're not gonna make it very far. And if you're not willing to accept feedback, you're not gonna make it very far. And if you're not a professional, you're not gonna make it very far. I'll add this into the things nobody tells you. The only true power that I have in the world is my reaction to things. I have the power to plan any lesson I want. Yeah, great. But when things happen to you, or when you need to make things happen in your life, Sometimes you forget that, that your reaction to good and the bad is very important because it sets a precedent for what's gonna happen next. Having a calm demeanor, sometimes saying less is the most important thing, and taking the high road is something that I've learned is so valuable. There are so many times where you can truly doubt yourself as a teacher. You're looking around at all these other teachers are like, well, they've been teaching for so much longer. Wow, how they do this, that's, that's probably the best way to do it. But just like everybody on this earth is different and has different ways of doing things, so do us as teachers. We cannot have every single classroom be the exact same. How are we going to need to meet students where they're at if we're like that? We made it through here. A few times I didn't know if I would, but we made it through. I've only been here since January, and so I didn't really think I made that much of an impression on my kids. I thought they hated me sometimes because I'm kind of strict. I had one student in particular that he was really struggling with his anger, and I'd given him just a note card and it had eight things to calm you down. And yesterday at graduation, the first thing he said to me is, Mr. Ross, I still have the piece of paper and I use it all the time. It's something that I just thought off the top of my head, hey, this might help him, and in reality it actually did. And I was like, wow, that's something else. If there's anything I could leave to future teachers, it's, it's that don't be afraid to fail because you will.
you're not perfect, you're gonna mess up a lot. And that's okay. I think I just now finally realized what this is all about. If I didn't do what I do, the world can do what it does. And I have the most important job in the world. And I think I just now realized the importance of my profession. It's something that it's really, really, really hard, but I'd rather have it be really, really, really hard and know that I am actually making a ripple effect for ages. This is a gift to be able to say that I'm a teacher. Fighting 